Welcome to the 12th session of Agriculture 194V, Focus on Agriculture. And of course, Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30 p.m. from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. Well, it's good to be back. It's been about uh, one month now. And uh, before I go on, uh, I'd like to make a few announcements. If I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, if you ever have to get a hold of me, uh, you can write to me at uh, the College of Agriculture, UH Hilo, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720-4091 or you can get a hold of me by phone at 974-7393 and uh, also uh, by fax at 974-7674 and for those of you on uh, email uh, you can get a hold of me at jfuji at hawaii.edu also I'd like to say a few words about the College of Agriculture uh, Forestry and Natural Resource Management uh, we offer a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture with specializations in the area of agribusiness, agroecology and environmental quality, animal science with a pre-veterinary uh, program and a production option. We also have an aquaculture specialization, crop protection, general agriculture and tropical horticulture. Also, I'd like to mention that the recipes are due uh, in my office by next Thursday. So for those of you taking the course at home, make sure that you mail in your recipes to me uh, by this coming Thursday or by next Thursday. And then also, uh, please make sure you uh, get your notes into me. Uh, let's see, I think uh, one week after next Thursday during finals week or during finals. Uh, uh, well, I'll make a final announcement during the last session, which is uh, next Thursday evening. Also, we have missed several sessions now uh, due to the uh, strike. Uh, we have missed two sessions and uh, we also missed one session due to the closure of the university due to uh, a flood that we had. So if I could have the Elmo again, uh, I kind of jotted down real uh, messy here. Can you see that? So we're going to change the grading system. Uh, 12 to 13 lecture notes will be an A, 10 to 11 will be a B, 8 to 9 a C, and 6 to 7 lecture notes a D, and I hope that you're all up here. Okay? So uh, we're going to uh, subtract uh, I believe it's uh, three sessions from this semester due to the two uh, sessions that we missed, missed due to the strike and one due to the closure of the university. Okay, since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the view viewing audience and of course those of you here in the studio uh, can ask questions of our guests this evening and the phone numbers will be on the screen at approximately 8 p.m. So jot down your questions and please uh, give us a call. We have another very interesting presentation for you. Uh, I know the Merry Monarch is on this evening, uh, but we hope that you'll uh, surf the channel over to Focus on Agriculture or stay with us all uh, for the next hour and a half. We, this evening we are featuring uh, a different, uh, on our schedule we were supposed to have fiascos tonight, but fiascos couldn't make it, so we have instead uh, Glow Ivy's Filipino store and restaurant located in Kona uh, will be with us this evening. And my guests are Rolando Esteban, Rolando is the owner of Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant. Uh, maybe you can wave your hand there, Rolando. And then joining uh, Rolando is Glow Ivy Est uh, Esteban, that's the daughter of Lo uh, Rolando, who's going to be helping out this evening. And also we have Nell uh, Venzon. 
Uh, he's the president of uh, Kariko Hawaii, a distributor of high quality uh, cookware, and maybe he can say a few words about uh, that a little later on in the class. So what I'm going to do now is turn the class over to Rolando, and we're going to do some cooking. So Rolando, why don't you take over the class? Okay, good evening. Tonight, uh, the Glow Abyss Filipino American Store and Restaurant will present you our We'll give you some uh, authentic Filipino food that we usually uh, 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 serve back home. And the very first thing that we're going to do, of course, is the, uh, the fresh uh, lumpia roll. Usually people will think about the uh, lumpia roll, they think about the fry. But this one, we're going to make some fresh one out of uh, shrimp and vegetables. The second entree we're going to have today is the, what we call the embutido or the ground pork roll. It is just uh, usually uh, like the pate style of the, uh, the French or Italian. And then we're also going to have the uh, pancit guisado. This is the noodles uh, we're going to use for tonight. Um, back home, we got different kind of noodles. We got, so um, tonight, we, uh, we choose to have the uh, pancit bihon or the rice sticks. That's a pancit bihon sorted with different kind of vegetables, shrimp, uh, lap chung and chicken. And that, uh, the third one, we're going to have the uh, kare kare oxtail stew. This uh, oxtail stew, usually people when they hear about the stew, they're thinking about tomatoes. But this time, we're going to use the uh, peanut butter and roasted, ground roasted uh, rice um, powder as our sauce. And of course, for our dessert, we're going to have the uh, what we call the leche plant with the banana fritters and tapioca. It's kind of rich one though. Uh, to start, of course, we're going to start with the uh, fresh lumpia. Okay, for the ingredients for our fresh lumpia, of course, we're going to have the, uh, the shrimp, our, our base of meat. Then we're going to have uh, the turnips or kahima. Then we get uh, uh, the green beans, carrots, sweet potato, of course, with the onion and garlic. It's all cut in Julian style. Okay, uh, Rolando, how long have you been uh, opened over there at Glow Ivy? I know you joined us uh, several uh, years ago when you were with uh, Volcano House. And uh, now, uh, and then I, I understand you went to the Four, four Seasons. seasons. And then now you opened up Glow Ivy in Kona. And uh, so how long have you been opened in Kona? We've been open in Kona almost a year now. We opened up last year, 2000, on May, uh, April 31st, actually. Okay. So pretty soon we're going to have our first year anniversary. And come visit us. Because we're going to have our all kinds of sales and all kinds of specials in the store and the restaurant. And, and where are you located over there in Kona? We are located in the Kupiko Plaza. It's just an off Pal Pal Palani Road. It's across Hilohati's Kona or below along Silanihau. Okay. Okay, to start, of course, we're going to have. Where's the camera? A little bit of oil. Okay. So Nell, uh, you you're the president of uh, Kariko Hawaii. Uh, what what do you do over there at Kariko Hawaii? Well, we uh, we distribute the uh, one of the finest quality uh, set of cookware. And what we've got on TV as you there see now right is now okay. is the uh, we have a waterless, greaseless cookware, mm -hmm. and uh, not only cookware, we have also fine china, cutleries, and uh, water purification, and also uh, air uh, purification also. I see. And, uh, it's uh, okay, a help. So, yes, uh, Rolando, what are you doing now? I've well, tried to mix up the, uh, the one for uh, to fill up our uh, lumpia roll. Okay. So I have the uh, sauté, the, uh, the garlic, and the onion together with the shrimp. 
Okay. Then I put up the green the green beans. Okay. And next would be the uh, the carrots, Julian <laughs> style. So you have to uh, cook the the filling first a little bit. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have the uh, kajima or the uh, what they call the uh, yam chap soy. They call mm. it the uh, by the Chinese. Then we're going to have the sweet yam potato. So the, the sweet, is that sweet potato? Sweet potato. Uh, do you have to cook that first or? You uh, just actually, you blanch it for a couple of minutes. No, don't overcook it or else it will be mossy. Oh, I see. I so see. what we intend to do with this uh, filling is that uh, most of them is cooked half, half cooked. Okay. So. So, so you julienne the, uh, the sweet potato and then you blanch it? Blanch it for a couple of minutes. Okay. Make sure uh, after blanching it, you go to um, ice cold water. So that we're gonna stop the cooking. Okay. <laughs> and this is the uh, authentic uh, dish that is uh, prepared in the Philippines. Prepared in the Philippines and usually this is common in the Southeast Asia. Vietnamese or Thailander or Malaysians. Okay. So it's all vegetarian, isn't it? Yeah, it's a vegetarian. It's either you uh, cut off the, uh, the shrimp or just oh, put a few right. vegetables. In there. Okay. So do you uh, prepare this particular uh, dish <laughs> over there at uh, Glow Ivy? We at just the put it on the special. It's cooked to order, actually. Okay. Okay, add some soy sauce. And you added, did you also add some uh, salt to that? Rolando, did you add some salt? I put some salt and pepper already, so okay. just to taste it. Because huh? mm -hmm. uh, after this, we're going to make the uh, what we call the garlic sauce. Okay. Excuse me. And of course, for those of you who just tuned in, you're watching Agriculture 194B, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening, we're featuring Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant located in the Copico Plaza in Kona, across from the Hilo Hattie. And uh, uh, Rolando, you say that uh, you have a store there also in addition to the restaurant. So yes, it's in a half pop operation. So you can buy all your Filipino foods and <laughs> goods uh, over there, right? Yes, sir. Okay. We get, uh, if you need some uh, Filipino uh, products, canned goods, dry goods, even uh, all kind of uh, products that um, it's just like back home. Okay. What are you boiling here? Sugar. What are you boiling here? And what was that that you added? Okay, this is for, uh, this is for uh, our uh, Sauce for our lumpia. Okay, what did, what was the first thing you? The put? first thing we did, we got to put the water okay. and, the, uh, and the soyu. Okay. About the equal parts of water and shoyu. We we usually for, for now because we um, we're gonna make only a small portion. Okay. But uh, the actual portion for this is um, uh, one cup of shu and uh, one cup of water, and a one fourth cup of soyu. Okay. And then a one fourth uh, cup of uh, brown sugar. Okay. And a cloves of garlic being crossed, okay. and we got taken up with the cornstarch. And did you share that with me in the, in, <laughs> for our recipes? Did you share that uh, sauce uh, recipe with me, or? Um, we so happy that we never had a chance to because um, only yesterday oh, we okay. found out, so okay. we didn't have a chance to do all the recipes. But as uh, as we usually do, we submit all the recipes we're doing uh, tonight. Okay, so you'll get them to me later on. Yes, sir. Okay. And so this is the sauce for the uh, fresh lumpia. Fresh lumpia, yes. Okay. Let me add the grass garlic. So while I'm doing this, so while I'm doing this, I will let uh, my daughter Glow Ivy to roll a couple of lumpia. Okay. And she will show you how to do it. Let me relax. Okay. 
No, so maybe we can get the uh, overhead camera and uh, uh, okay, there we go. Go ahead, Glow Ivy. The restaurant is named after you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get the. You explain. Get down. Go ahead and run it. So first you put uh, uh, some lettuce. Uh, some lettuce and inside the uh, lumpia wrapper. Okay. Make sure you fill them up uh, maybe a couple of um, big spoons. Okay. Fold the bottom, then fold the edges. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, put it back there. That is the fresh lumpia. Okay. Looks okay, you good. Got another one. So the uh, lumpia wrap, you can just buy. You just buy it at a grocery store or supermarket. Okay. Suck and save, Safeway, or KTA. So you use actually two two lumpia per two lumpia wrap. Yeah. per wrap. Okay. Look at it. <laughs> or you can get the the wrappers at the Glow Ivy uh, restaurant and Filipino store, right? Or Glow right. Ivy Filipino store and restaurant. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you do is you get two lumpia wrap, put the lettuce down, then you put uh, several tablespoons of uh, the filling, and then you probably to wrap it right there, then on the sideways, and then roll it up. So if I wanted to eat this at the restaurant. Uh, uh, I can just uh, ask you, Rolando, that I want this uh, uh, lumpia, fresh lumpia wrap, and you'll prepare that for me? Yes, sir. Okay. You always get the ingredients all the time in the store. And then now you're going to put the sauce. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right there. To taste. It's good. That will be our first uh, uh, as appetizer. Okay. Okay. The next one we're gonna do. Embutido. Embutido. Or it is the uh, egg roll. Egg yes, the ingredients we're gonna have is that. Uh, <coughs> you're gonna have uh, ground pork. Okay, ground pork. So what, what part of the Philippines are these dishes from? Any particular region? This is um, usually most of the stuff that we have, we're cooking in the store came from uh, Southern Tagalog and uh, Pampanga region. And sometimes we, we put some uh, Ilocano dishes. Okay. And this one came from uh, Pampanga, no Pampango. It's a region tree, which they call the Central Luzon region. Central Luzon. Okay. This you gotta put one uh, one egg. And about how many pounds of ground pork is that? About a pound. Half a pound. Okay, and uh, one egg. You got the sweet relis. Okay. What is that, relish? Yeah, sweet relis. Sweet relish, okay. Yeah. A couple yeah. tablespoons. A couple tablespoons of sweet relis. Okay. Then we had. Uh, Chopped carrots. Okay, and what you're doing is really dicing or chopping up the, the small, carrots. The small dice, actually. Okay. And about how much, uh, how much carrot would you say that is? It's, about, it's only about mm, 
few, uh, maybe about one fourth of a carrot, usually we're doing it. So, Rolando, uh, what are the hours of the restaurant and store, Glow Ivy's uh, Filipino store and restaurant? Our store open from eight uh, 9 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. till 8 o'clock in the evening. Okay, that's And our hotline, you usually get a hotline, 10 items in a hotline. We, uh, we serve that from 10 o'clock or 10 o'clock till uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Okay, after that, you are going to lay your... Uh, and botido. Much. And then you're going to get one hard boiled egg. One hard boiled egg. Okay. Then we're going to have the Vienna sausage. Lay them up. Vienna sausage. Okay, Vienna sausage. You mean they got Vienna sausage in the Philippines, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay, just like you must have spam over there spam, too. Spam, huh? corned beef. All right. You get the toro and the spam over there. Mm -hmm. Thing we gotta do is just. Vigo. Hmm? Oh, you, so you get a sushi roller and just. Sushi roller. You use a sushi roller to, oh. to roll him up. So the uh, egg and the Vienna sausage is in the middle of the ground pork. And so, and voila. So this one, you're gonna cook it. Is either you cook it bake, put it in a steamer, or you can cook it as a deep fryer. It's either either way either way, uh, either way you want it. Okay, for now, since we don't have any the fryer, no, we'll just do uh, the steaming. Yeah, bring okay. it out there. Okay. So, uh, you, do you leave the aluminum foil around, uh, or do you take that off? No, you, you, you put them all, yeah, the fry them or steam them. Okay, so when you put it in the oven, at what temperature? The temperature is 350 degrees for probably about an hour. Okay. 45 minutes to an hour. At 350. 350. And make sure if you really uh, want to check it for the pork, usually we put 165 degrees inside temperature. Oh, That's the temperature for the pork. The thermometer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we got a couple over here. We got to do, we do, as I said, we'll do the steaming. Okay. This one. I already made a couple of those for us for tonight. So we got okay. plenty for the class. Okay. <laughs> And this is the magic for uh, oh, this for, uh, for this one. While I'm steaming it, I'm already already boiling the oxtail for our uh, curry curry stew or oxtail stew. Okay. So so in other words, uh, the water you're getting it ready for the oxtail yes, soup. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The water and the oxtail because the oxtail takes about hour hour and a half to make them soft. Oh, so you've got the oxtail I'm still in going there already now. underneath while I'm steaming the. Uh, oh. And that's the the magic of uh, Corico. Oh, I see. But so the next thing we're going to do today is what we call the pancit uh, or the noodles. Okay. As I said a while ago, back home we, we're using different kind of pancit. I, I think we get about uh, seven kind of pancit. And today we brought only five kinds of it. And they got different, different kinds. Huh? This one, this is the rice flour actually. Rice flour and water. This is made of a rice flour and cornstarch and water. And this one, this is made up of the wheat flour and with all kind of seasoning. This one, the, the glossy one, is made of mango beans and water. Okay. Out of green mango beans. So uh, tonight, as I said, we're going to use the bihon. Okay? Let's see. Uh, Rolando, do you have another one of those I can put under the other camera over here, the overhead camera? Sure. So, uh... <laughs> well, let me have uh, one of each. Let me have one of these, one of these, and one of these. 
of these. Now I'm going to put it over the overhead so people can see it. <laughs> and if I could have the overhead camera, just a sec, let me zoom back on it. So if I can have the the Elmo, uh, you can get the, there's one, the rice, the, the rice stick, and then the Chinese, Chinese, mm, a lot of glare here. Chinese noodles, pancit, uh, canton, and then the next one here is the uh, mung bean noodle, and the fine rice noodle, palabak. And these are all available at the Low Ivy Filipino store and restaurant. Okay. Okay, the next one we're going to make today is the pancit or the noodles, the rice stick noodles. And how do you prepare? Okay, about a quarter of a red bell pepper. Quarter of a red bell pepper. Julienne. So all, most, most of my vegetables have been cut julienne. Okay. So we get the carrots over here, and the green beans, okay. the shiitake mushroom, shiitake. and the uh, uh, Chinese snow peas. Okay. And we go saute them up with the... Uh, saute them up with the um, julienne uh, strips of chicken. Okay. And we get the lachung and the shrimp. Okay. Chicken, lap chong, and shrimp. And we get this, uh, the stock that we use, uh, you know, the, the shells of the, the shrimp and the bone and the skin of the chicken made of a stock out of it. Okay. So you save all the shell from the shrimp, the bone from the, bone the chicken. And, and make them stock out of it so the flavor will, will penetrate on the noodles. Okay. Then uh, we go mix them up that too with the uh, celery and... Uh, so, uh, are you the only authentic Philippine uh, restaurant? This, this uh, they, they get another Filipino restaurant over there, which is Tantes, right in the um, bowling, bowling alley. Uh -huh. But um, I, I don't know. But I think they uh, they got a mixture already. So, authentically speaking, we are the only one. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. the smallest space we get. That's why. Okay, we get we we go start it with the, uh, the chicken. Make sure the chicken is cooked. Okay, the chicken goes in first into the wok, and we got uh, quite a bit of oil in there. Huh? Yeah. What kind of oil do you use? We use a vegetable oil usually. Okay. So much of input. You need a relatively high heat to uh, prepare these dishes, huh? Because um, we need a high heat for the fact that if you have, you don't have any boiling water, your noodles will be uh, moussey. So usually uh, the other way to do it is they soak it first before they cook it. Because they gotta um, cook it fast. Okay. Okay, you have the garlic. Okay, chicken, then the garlic. And you got your uh, chopped onions. Chopped round onions, okay. Followed by your shrimp. Okay, the shrimp, julienne shrimp. Or just cut. You can see that uh, I put the chicken, I cook the chicken first because that's all, uh, take long to cook the chicken. Okay. We don't want any raw chicken in there. Okay. We don't want any salmonella. <laughs> Then you're going to follow with your vegetables. And what do you put in first? Carrots? Okay. <laughs> Green beans. Green beans. Sataki mushroom. Sataki mushrooms. The snow peas. And the Chinese snow peas. And we put the, uh, in the celery. Celery. Okay. And we put the, uh, the cabbage last, because uh, the cabbage are cooked faster. Okay.
And this is this is called a um, pancit gusado. Pancit gusado. Pancit gusado. Okay. <coughs> There's no space here. So, uh, do we have to make reservations to go to your restaurant? Uh, no, it's all walk in. Just walk it's in. All walk in. Okay. And uh, about how many people can we get the capacity for our restaurant? Since we got a store, half store and half restaurant, the capacity is only about 30 people. 30 people. Okay. Now, do you do any uh, takeout lunches or? Yeah, we, we open the lunch, we got, as I said, we got the hotline of the buffet where you can make some choices. Usually every day we're doing 10 items. 10 items, yeah, we got those favorite uh, adobo, the pork piece, then you get your uh, laoya, and you get some kuchar on all, um, all kind of Filipino food. Oh, so you, got, sour you got all the different choices there, and then uh, you can pick whatever you want. That, you pick whatever you line. want. We oh, have only um, um, reasonable price. One choice we have only four ninety five. Two choices we're gonna have uh, five ninety five, and three choices we got only six ninety five. It's nice. a pool. It's mountain. Okay. I guarantee you. Guarantee you won't <laughs> leave uh, Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant with an empty stomach, huh? Right. Okay. <laughs> you heard that, folks. So next time you're over there in Kona, uh, you want some good. Uh, Filipino uh, food go to Glow Ivy Filipino store and restaurant. Usually I don't overcook my uh, my vegetables and all. Because you want your veggies to be crunchy and not moussey. Okay. And the flavor is still there. And this one will be your garnish or for the toppings for your noodles. Okay. So while we're still cooking this, I go put up the uh, the stock that I made a while ago. Okay, what, what do you have inside the uh, wok there? Uh, more vegetables? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Usually the stock for, okay. for, every, for every package of noodles, I used to be about three or four cups of water or stocks. Okay. Make sure, as I said a while ago, make sure the, the water is rapid boiling or else you gotta, you gotta come up with um, maybe some bibinka or some some other things that is really sticky. Okay. Wood, <laughs> wood. But you can also uh, pre-soak the noodles uh, if you wanted to, right? Yeah. If you pre if you were really in a hurry or you want it fast, pre-soak so you don't need to make the boil. You know, pre-soak the noodles so you can just go ahead and fry them I or saute them up. Okay. Then I add up, I add up the uh, andeto seeds or what they call atsuete. This is the atsuete seeds. We come up, we extract the, uh, the color. And this one is just like the uh, saffron that gets the flavor in it, uh, aside from having a color. Can you get that at the, at the store? At the store. Okay. Or even uh, around, around the island, I saw some trees of this. <laughs> but you gotta wor work it hard because you gotta extract all the, you yeah, boil them up just to get the uh, the color out of it and the flavor also oh, you have to make it you have to make it but we got uh, ready made in a store that you can buy it's already packaged i think uh, we got one sample over here i think this one right here and this is the net to say it's that uh, and then i will put it under the elmo uh, if i could have the elmo please uh, there it is uh what is it mama gita's uh, Anato, all natural food coloring. Okay, and that is available at the oh, store. I okay. Ventilation. <coughs> and now Rolando is preparing the pancit, uh, pancit gusado. Pancit gisado. Gisado. Bihon gisado. G U I S A D O. Okay. Pancit gisado. This came from the Spanish. Actually, the term came from the Spanish. So gisado means to to saute. Okay.
So do you do any uh, catering over there? That's one thing we want to emphasize to everyone. That we do catering not only for uh, Filipino. We can do up to uh, Hawaiian catering if you want on Hawaiian food. Or if you want some local foods, we'll do that too. And up to the seafood primary buffet, we can do that too. It depends on our, you know, um, the way you want your uh, party. What is, what is the phone number over there? Our the phone number, we get a 327-1520. And we get a fax number 327-0301. Okay, your phone number. Really. The phone number over there at Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant is 327-1520. Uh, and the fax is 327-330. What was the fax number? Fax number 327 3301. 327 3301. 0301. 03. Okay, it's almost ready. Okay. So I still have to thank the uh, Mr. Nel Besson <laughs> over here for our cutteries and all the, the equipment and the utensils we're using. It's a uh, courtesy of uh, Corico. Corico International. Nell Benson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Screw ah. the pancit. Mm. Then put the rest, uh, cook it a little more. So the noodles come Put a little nice soil. And, and what is that you're garnishing it with? Is so that lime? Calamansi. That's uh, calamansi. what we call the uh, Philippine lemon. Calamansi. They call it calamansi. It is uh, sour like a lemon. Okay. It's really, you mean it's really sour? It's, it's like a lemon or? Yeah. Same like lemon. It's uh, actually the taste is in between lemon and lime. <laughs> kind of strong taste though, I don't know, sourness and tartness. And uh, Broke the mouth, eh? Or then you top it off with more of the vegetables. More of the vegetables that make it more good. Uh -huh. And tasteful. And this little bit of pepper. To put it in. Okay, it's okay. ready to go. Oh. Voila. Taste. Looks good. Can't wait till 8 o'clock or 8.30. And uh, it, uh, what what is next, Rolando? The Our main entree soup? will be the, uh, Ox the soup? oxtail stew with peanut uh, and roasted uh, rice sauce. Okay. Okay. Let me clear them up over here for a while. And again, uh, for those of you who are just joined us, uh, you're watching uh, Focus on Agriculture. Ag 194B, Focus on Agriculture, and this evening we're featuring Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant in Kona at the Copico Plaza. And joining me this evening is uh, Rolando Esteban, the uh, chef and owner, and uh, we have uh, Glow Ivy, uh, which is Rolando's daughter, and uh, Nell Venzon, who is president of uh, Carico Hawaii, a distributor of uh, uh, fine uh, cooking uh, utensils, uh, knives also, yes. and, uh, Thank you. and 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 where are you located, uh, uh, Nell? Uh, our uh, home base is in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh -huh. USA, in uh, uh, Fort Lee, we call it, and. Uh, we have an office, uh, home office here in uh, Kailua, Kona, and uh, we have also in uh, Honolulu, and uh, two, two offices in Honolulu. So is your yes. cookware for a restaurant, or for home, or for both? Actually for, for both though. Okay. It's 95% is uh, homeowners though. Okay. Uh, housewives and... So is it like all the stainless steel or yeah, yeah, this all is, kinds? This is made of uh, one of the highest quality surgical steel. It's 18% chromium and 10% nickel. Oh. And uh, as you see, uh, the uh, the uh, there is in in the middle of this there is a, what you call the uh, 
is the the core is the reason why it's so fast there is a it's a heat conducting core oh, I see. Okay. and the nice thing here also is that we have uh, it shows the temperature the gauge right here and also it whistle <laughs> it's like it's just like a a whistle. A it's a whistle. It's a kill kettle. Yeah. I see. Yes. <laughs> okay, Rolando. What do okay. we? Okay. What we having here now is the uh, we're gonna make the uh, I make the parboil oxtail. Okay. Okay. And then usually we, we make our sauce with the uh, roasted rice, ground roasted rice, and peanut butter. Okay. So uh, how much oxtail do you use in your your soup there? We get about um, three oxtail actually over here. It's we get the three servings. Okay. That's what we usually do. The vegetable we do that uh, we get the uh, the baby bok choy. Okay, baby bok choy. We get the uh, eggplant. Uh, okay, long eggplant. eggplant. Okay. Actually, uh, Filipino food is very uh, nutritious. nutritious and uh, healthy. But uh, most of our desserts are <laughs> really rich. Well, the desserts uh, got rich. a lot of sugar. Huh? And this, even this one, because uh, we're going to mix up uh, to make our sauce for our stew. I get the roasted rice, ground roasted rice, and probably about... Uh, So mm -hmm. how do how do you make? Did you say roasted yeah, rice? Yeah, roasted rice. Actually, before because as, nowadays we can buy the roasted rice already, ready mix. It's already mixed up, all season. But we usually, when I remember when I was small, when they make that uh, uh, roasted uh, ground roasted rice, they pound they roast it up first to till it's uh, been dark and black, and then they pound it up till it's powder. That's how they do it. And then they go mix them up with the uh, agneto or the uh, atsuete to make it the color. And they put up some um, dehydrated uh, green. Uh, this one they got already get the dehydrated onion and garlic inside and salt and pepper. So it's already been seasoned. Okay, if I could have the Elmo, uh, there you can see the, uh, what is it? The uh, Mamacita's uh, stew base mix. Kare kare. But uh, what do you, how, how do you pronounce that? Pang kare kare? Kare kare. Yeah. Kare kare. Yeah. Okay. And that's available at the store? Yes. Okay. And this is what you're using to make the oxtail soup, right? The oxtail yes, soup. Sir. I mix him up with uh, some of the stuff out of the oxtail. Okay. And then mix him up with the peanut butter. Okay. So while I'm mixing him up, uh, before I mix him up, I'm going to put some uh, vegetables already there on the... Uh, so the, uh, the eggplant. Okay, the eggplant goes in with the oxtail soup. Do you put any salt and pepper inside the uh, oxtail soup? No, actually it never did, because it, it struck, it's really uh, you know, okay, it's seasoned the, already. I see. And wh what do you call that? This is long beans, those are sitao. Okay, <laughs> long beans. We got the Shine. bok choy, as I said, the long beans. You Shine got that at the restaurant? I mean, got that the in the store? restaurant, ready to go. So everything we cook there, we sell too. Oh, I see. And this one, um, back home, we're using the banana heart. You remember the banana heart on the, the blossom? Oh, okay. the banana flower. I don't have any, I didn't see any uh, banana blossom. I'm, I'm trying to get some swap meat or in a pre market, but didn't able to find. So this one is a ready made. Okay, this uh, already can, we, we can buy it in the store. Okay, I remember the last time. Uh, the last time I had my um, demonstration over here, some people asked me, "How are you gonna use the uh, banana blossom?" Or, and this is one way. Okay. So that you're using the canned one now. If you're using the the fresh, uh, you can use the fresh one. You gotta have the uh, the real the, the inside one, the soft part. Oh, so you peel the outer, peel the outer part layers out and, and get the very heart take of off it. some of the, uh, the flowers inside. Okay. But it's uh, much faster to use the canned... Uh, it's really it's ready made, huh? Okay. Okay. 
Now, now you also you mentioned roasted rice. Now, roasted rice. What would they do? Just like a, just like what they do with the sesame. Before we, we mix them up, we roast them up. Oh, so same I thing. See. We use the rice, roast them up, make it make it dark brown, and pound it to uh, to make it a ground bar. Okay. So, so you just put the rice in the frying pan and roast it. Roast them up, and then pound it, then, then smash it yeah. up. Smash them up. Okay. And I said I get here some of the uh, the stock from uh, and the soup. Yeah, a couple of uh, cup of uh, peanut butter and the roasted rice. Okay, I wonder if we can get an overhead shot of that. Oh. Okay. Inspire. <laughs> Okay. We also put some uh, salted bagoong. This is, <laughs> the, this is not smelly anymore. This is shrimp <laughs> bagoong now. This is real, real good and it's tasty. No more, no more the smell. It is, uh, it's fine. Okay. And the other, this bagoong is like a paste. It's not yeah, a liquid. shrimp paste. This is the shrimp paste. Ah, That's why most of the stuff in the Philippines. Uh, <laughs> We're doing South, Southeast Asian style. That's why bagong. Not only Filipinos use this. Thailander, let Malaysian. Me, let, me, uh, let me put that under the bagong. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, can we take a look at that under the uh, the Elmo? Can we have the Elmo, please? There we go. Kamayan. Sat satay shrimp paste. Okay. You gotta remember the name Kamayan. Kamayan means hands. So people, usually people back home, especially during old days, they use their hands. So that's where they came the, the name, Kamayan. So when they eat, they use their hands. Kamai means hands. So Instead of chapstick. Huh? Instead of spoon <laughs> or chapstick. I see. Okay. Tastes better that way, huh? <laughs> Can this like it It's like poi. <laughs> it's kind of a messy thing, but this is one of the uh, uh, the favorite of Filipino people, curry curry. And when you go for a restaurant, big restaurant back home, people people who order this is really you know can afford. But the pork common is really expensive. Uh, delicacy this. So uh, for lunch over there, you just had the, the hotline where you have about 10 different uh, uh, selections. And then what about dinner? Actually, actually not only uh, on the selection on the line. Yeah, we also have some menu. We're doing some local food, kalbi or teriyaki, beef, chicken katsu. And we, all, we do this cook to order. Same thing with uh, nighttime. Nighttime, you know, Whatever some whatever we pre prep the meat night time. So when they and they had the a la carte night time, we just cook to order. Okay. okay. Uh. <coughs> so so it's not only Filipino food but uh, you have all kinds. We had all kinds, the local grind, local grind, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and then some of uh, and then you also do the catering, you say in the catering, catering you can do said, any kind. Any kind. You want to go Hawaiian luau? We we'll do all the Hawaiian. We got the lau lau. We got the kalua pig. We got the poi and everything. Same thing with the local. If you like some local food, we can give you the old um, um, teriyaki chicken or whatever you want. So and you, you as I said, up to the uh, prime seafood buffet, we can do that for you. So catering up to how many people? Um, the catering we usually do the catering at least a hundred people. Because with, with the presentation and with the uh, preparation we're doing, we, because if not, um, I'm sorry, but you know we don't want to give you a, a expensive one. So the thing I can do is that if you do for a hundred people, I think it's reasonable that fair for both of us. Okay. What's the maximum? The maximum, you know, whatever you want. Limit, yeah. Huh? Okay. Okay. We, we put this one last. Okay. The baby pak choy. Okay, it's ready to go. So the vegetables you don't cook very much to make sure that they are crunchy. <coughs> and 
And what do you what do you call this again? It's a, it's an oxtail soup, but a special kind, right? Oxtail soup uh, gotta, gotta with gotta. peanut peanut butter sauce and uh, peanut butter and roasted rice sauce. Kare kare. Kare kare. <laughs> Make it short. That's why some uh, some uh, local people or from the mainland when they saw it, they knew it too from the mainland because um, I got the. Uh, Many people have been ordered this already, and they said they like care care. Okay. It's kare kare actually. <laughs> kare kare. Kare kare. But kare. they call it care care. <laughs> <laughs> Just like dinner on the run. Mm. Huh? Dinner on the run. Oh, dinner on the run. The run the run. Okay. We have that in our menu too. Oh, dinner on the run is on the menu. <laughs> on the menu. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to go there and, and uh, try out the lunch. Sure, please. So. It's uh, it's not really a soup, yeah. It's it's more thick. It's a, that's why it's a stew. stew, a stew, Curry. a stew. Yeah, okay, oxtail sure. stew We're using uh, roasted rice and peanut butter sauce. Correct. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's, that's the oxtail stew with roasted rice and peanut butter. Or kare kare. Kare kare. Yeah. Okay. And the last thing we're gonna do is a uh, dessert. Is a dessert? It's a dessert. Okay. We call it leche pan. And usually, local people or over here, we call it uh, custard, egg custard. But this one, uh, egg custard, I go serve them up with uh, banana peppers. Uh, with caramel, caramelized uh, tapioca. Okay, and uh, it looks like you're using the apple bananas. This is the apple banana. Usually, we're using the uh, cooking banana. As oh. I said, I went, I went, I cannot find yet. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> Probably I got the wrong timing. So it's best to use the cooking banana. Cooking banana, more tasteful and more. Uh, uh, okay, and then more firm. And then you're putting the banana, banana in, in a coat, you coat coating it, it with a brown sugar. Coating it with brown sugar, okay. Uh, so Ivy, maybe you can move it over there more towards the, then we can get the overhead camera. There, now, you can see that you cut the bananas lengthwise and uh, coat it with uh, brown sugar. Okay. And then what are you what are you gonna do with the bananas? You gotta fry them up in the oil, the bits of oil, okay. while we're making our custard. Okay, excuse me, here. So make a custard. The custard uh, you're gonna have a, a dozen of egg, only egg yolk now, only egg yolk. A dozen okay. of egg. A dozen uh, egg yolks. A dozen egg yolks. Okay. And a can of uh, evaporated milk. milk. Okay. A can of uh, condensed condensed milk. Okay. And you get your uh, vanilla, vanilla extract. extract. Okay. okay. And this is the way you make uh, custard. Custard, yeah. Okay. The chip plan. And overhead camera, move over to see the. Uh, there we go. Okay. Go try and, and again, the, you say no that this is a traditional Filipino. Traditional dessert. Filipino. It's rich. <laughs> what was that Filipino dessert that you put ice in and you put. Uh, halo, halo. Halo, halo. Yeah, That's we, okay. we're planning to do that. Uh, we oh. had that in our menu. The special halo, halo, halo with all kind of uh, fruit preserves, you save ice and milk, and top them up with a uh, different kind of flavor of ice cream. You want some right. uh, yam ice cream or uh, yam coconut or cashew nuts, and you know we got all kinds of ice cream. Yeah, when I went to the Philippines, I had some halo, halo, and uh, it was uh, pretty good. And you have that over there. We have that over there. That's why you have the chance to choose which, what, uh, what kind of ice cream you want. Okay. It's uh, a Philippine ice cream though, not uh, the oh gold. Or you get magnolia. So you got real Filipino ice cream. Real Filipino ice cream. 
from the Philippines or you make it? Yeah, actually it came from uh, the manufacturer in California by a Filipino... Uh, I see. That's a big one in the Philippines. Okay, and then one can of evaporated milk and one can of condensed milk. Okay. <laughs> My other... Uh, oh, that's all right. And this this is a standard way you make yogurt. Uh, this is a standard way. Um, they got the, the different variation of making uh, custard. Mm -hmm. from, you know, or even custard, over here, I'm sorry. Yeah, even over here, they, they, they get different kind of variation. What they're doing with their uh, custard. Just to caramelize it there. Yeah. Okay. So while we're cooking the banana. But since uh, I anticipate that we won't have enough time, so I uh, already made my own, ready made. So this is, this is the ingredients we put. Yeah. So we just mix them up, you know, okay. mix them up all <laughs> around, and then you got to put in the mold, you know, make some caramelized sugar, put it in the molds, or we usually use this kind of mold, or if you want uh, bigger. Maybe, uh, maybe you can move it over. Uh, can you hold it still by the bananas there so the overhead camera okay. can go, go to it? We usually, um, the, the standard we, uh, depends on the how big you want the custard. Oh, wait, so wait, we, wait, we, wait, wait now, let's see. Let's get the mold right there by the bananas uh, and then the overhead camera. Yeah, you got to hold it still so, okay. so the overhead camera can okay. zoom in on it. Okay, there we go. Okay, those okay. are the molds. Uh, Here's the molds we use for uh, you know custard, but it depends. If you're a big eater, you want a big mold, <laughs> of course. <Okay>. All right. <laughs> then it's either usually it's either we serve it the uh, with the uh, banana puree or caramelized and tapioca, but they're always um, just like my daughter. She wants ice cream on top. She wants a big, big one of this, top with uh, three kinds of ice cream. Ah, it's sweet. I don't know. Okay, we gotta do the presentation on this one. Okay, so the uh, evaporated milk and uh, condensed milk and the eggs, you just mix it all up. Mix it all up. Maybe, maybe our overhead camera can go on that uh, custard there. How it looks like, and then oh, okay. uh, so first you put the caramelized. Caramelize. See the see the inside one. Yeah, we put the caramelized sugar. We put this side. And then we put the mixture, and we steam it up. Okay, so it's either it's either you steam or you you bake it. Actually, when you bake, but however, when you bake it, make sure it's under water. I mean, about halfway through the water, and you go you bake them up in 350 around. Half an hour to forty-five minutes, okay. and when you uh, when you steam it, you steam it up only about twenty to half an hour. Okay. <coughs> okay. Then this, this is the tapioca. This is what takes uh, uh, longer to cook. So, as I said, we anticipate in a certain hour, you can buy your ready-made tapioca in the store. Okay, let me... It's already uh, with the season and everything. I mean, all the flavor inside already. Okay, so if I could have the Elmo, this is the tapioca pearls. And then uh, you have to... Uh, the the uh, the tapioca the pearls mama. roll on though. What do you have to do? You have to you boil it, boil it at least at least hour and a half to do boil that. It, so you're gonna put some more water. Okay, so if you don't wanna do that, then you can just get this here, which is already made for you, right? Yes, you can buy in the store. Okay. So it's ready made for you and at the store. Okay, back to you, Rolando. See all we did uh, you have this uh,
And that's that's kind of sweet, huh? Kind of sweet. We also use this for uh, you know uh, taho they call back home. Tofu. Taho is a. Um, Oh, a small place we get so it's voila. Mm -hmm. You got the rich, uh, and you can also put ice cream on. Put that. ice cream on top, any kind of ice cream you want. <laughs> okay, okay, and uh, are you gonna do uh, any more? That's it, then. and that's it for today. And we go make some more for the class. Okay, so thank you very much, Rolando, and thank it is too. about a uh, little after 8 o'clock, so we're going to open it up to question and answers, and I hope uh, you all are watching us this evening. Uh, the numbers are 933-3316, and the other number is 974-7726, and I think the, those numbers are on the screen. And uh, we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And uh, this is the Agriculture 194V Focus on Agriculture class, and this evening... Okay, uh, we are having a little bit of transmission problem, so I hope uh, you are able to hear what we're saying. But uh, this evening we're featuring Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant. And uh, our guests this evening are Rolando Esteban, the chef and owner, and uh, daughter of Glow Ivy, and uh, Nell Benzon, who is the president of uh, Carico Hawaii. And do we have any questions? If not, we're going to have to, uh, uh, maybe we can get the overhead camera on each dish. And then, uh, Rolando, maybe you can explain uh, uh, how we prepare the dish once more uh, for the people. OK, what is that, Rolando, on the screen? That's the? Um, That's a fresh lumpia. OK. Out of uh, the fresh vegetable sauté with the strip with the um, Garlic soy sauce. Okay, and then we go to the next uh, dish there. And uh, what is that, uh, Rolando? That That's the uh, oxtail curry curry or the oxtail stew using the uh, roasted uh, rice and peanut butter sauce. Okay, and then we can move it over to the next one. And, and that's one of the uh, uh, everybody's favorite, the uh, pancit guisado using pancit bihon. Okay. With the sauteed vegetables, lap chong, shrimp, and chicken. Okay, and then the next one is... The next one is, uh, we got the leche plant with the banana fritters and caramelized tapioca. Okay, and uh, for those of you who are watching us this evening, uh, we are coming to you live and the numbers are on the screen. If you're interested in any kind of uh, Filipino dishes or if you have any questions regarding uh, Filipino dishes, please give us a call. And do we have any questions? We have a question here, uh, Patrick, uh, uh, in the classroom. So Pat, uh, go ahead with your question. Yes, uh, my question is for Rolando. Um, he talked about his pancit using one type of uh, pancit noodle. And I was wondering if he ever combined all of the noodles together to make his pancit dish. And if he ever came across it in the Philippines, what type of region it would be from. And also, uh, what noodles would be placed in first for the dish? Our common orders that we're having now, we, we have it that. Um, some people, they like mix. So we usually mix only two items. Only two items, actually. Uh, could, could you hold up which ones are you're mixing? OK. Uh, most of the time, where's the canton? Oh. OK. I've got it over here. OK, mm. there you go. This is the common mixture of pancit. Now you gotta ordering. hold it real still so the camera can zoom into it. Okay, this is the common mixture that the people order in the China uh, pancit canton and the pancit bihan. Okay, hold and it this still. This is the common. Uh, as I said, we can mix only a couple, couple of times. If if we put all of those, I think we're gonna have a problem because <laughs> uh, the, the texture is different. Because um, for this one, we use bihan first because the wheat flour cook faster than bihan. Okay, 
and the other kind of noodles this is don't mix with anything this is what we call the pancit palabo okay it takes longer to cook this it takes about if it, this one takes only about 20 minutes this one will about half an, half an hour but this one cannot mix with each other okay and as i said we mix on and this one the other kind of uh this is the the, the easiest one to cook it only takes about 10 to 20 seconds this one's cooked so usually when they cook this kind of uh, items they cook they put the, the noodles last before they take them out from the pan okay we have uh, two callers on the line so we'll take the uh, first caller uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question please uh, dr fuji uh, could hello? you speak a little louder we can't hear you hello yes go ahead uh, dr fuji yes uh, this is haruso joe okay okay you know i i just harvested uh tapioca uh, cassava 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 potato you know cassava and, okay yeah and it's uh, that he he's been fooling around with that uh the tapioca and that's the same plant by the way and uh, uh I, I, can, can we get the volume up a little higher it's hard for us to hear go ahead uh, haruso joe uh, can you hear me now uh, hello still we have a hard time hearing go ahead uh anyway there we go hello yes go okay. ahead okay uh uh, this is for Rolando. I think he, he might know how to use that cas uh, uh, cassava plant. I just harvested, uh, after nine months, I harvested the cassava. I harvested some at six months. And now I harvested this cassava uh, potato after nine months, nine months or a year anyway. And I sure would like for him to explain how to use it because a lot of, uh, this, this plant was given to me by, uh, uh, we call it, uh, 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 people from... Uh, that okay, is. so Haruso Joe, you want to know how to prepare the uh, cassava roots or the yeah, tubers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Rolando, okay. you know how to prepare the cassava? Cassava is a different way to prepare it. Okay. It's either you boil it by itself, fill them up, and you dip them up with uh, sugar. Uh, coconut and sugar. That's one way. Second way is to, you just make one like uh, one suman. You remember the kankalen? Bud -bud. We make that bud bud they call. Yeah. Okay, we go mix them up with the um, the brown sugar and the uh, coconut. Cook them up. Uh, make sure it's grated and you cook them up. Then you make it just like one style of uh, suman or bud bud. And the other way is to make uh, some sort of cassava bibinka. Okay, cassava bibinka. There's plenty of variation for doing that it's either you want it the sweeter side you want to cook with the coconut or you just go with the brown sugar and it will go it's either you um, you, uh, you bake them up or you put uh, cook it in the oven so that as I said I make three ways already the cassava itself just boil it and dip them up with sugar or coconut it's optional or the second one is to make a suman out of it and the third one is to make the vinca out of it are those all desserts or? At all, they're all desserts. Now, can you make a... a and there's another one, I forget. Yeah, you can mix them up uh, with what we call the uh, ginataan. This is all the, the soupy one, soupy dessert with the uh, with, uh, rice ball, we get um, sweet potato, the banana, and everything. And the, the taro itself, cook them up with uh, like uh, coconut juice or coconut extract. Okay, Haruso uh, But you, you see, uh, uh, Rolando. Yes. Uh, I, I, I boiled it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, it it takes a, quite a bit of art to cook that because if you overcook it, it turns all stringy, you know. And uh, then, uh, at what point when you boil it, I, I noticed that thing, when the thing is, as soon as the thing is just about cracked, mm -hmm. and I I've been taking them out and I quick I do, uh, <laughs> put them on the cold water. Because otherwise, boy, the thing is, there's a terrific uh, string in the center of that cassava. And I, and I boiled it, and I still haven't got the knack of cooking them at the, to the right point. Because I use that, and I've, I've made uh, uh, something like potato salad with it. See? Use them like a regular potato. A regular potato. But it's real difficult to uh, uh, cook, them at, uh, to cook them right. So it, it, it stays firm. Huh? Okay, Otherwise, the thing come all strings like, you know. 
Go to the rest. I, I don't know whether you experienced that or not, but uh, that, that's why I call because uh, I'm getting in trouble with my uh, uh, in in just boiling them. And tr I'm trying to use them as a regular starch. I see. Cool. I think the one you've been doing, I can see what you mean because you got a string in the middle. Yeah, to make sure it can cook, what we do is uh, peel them up, cut them into half, I mean cut them into about this much, about 3 inches, yeah. and cut them out again to half, and take up the string from the inside, and you can just boil it right, right through with the water, and to, to have the texture, make, make sure to have your fork. Once you uh, pick, uh, pick them up with fork, it's cooked. Okay, and uh, you, just, uh, you just give me a better, better uh, way than, than I was doing it. Yeah, so anyway, uh, thank you for that, uh, the, uh, for that tip, uh, because I really, uh, hey, that, that's a really tricky potato to cook, you know. Yeah. And I can practice that, because I, I just harvested some cassava today, and I was, I, I saw, I said, hey, you, you may be the right guy to give me some good tips. And I think you. you gave me a pretty good tip right, right there. Thank Go you very much. Okay, Go to the uh, restaurant. one more thing, one more thing. As I said, probably what you've been doing, you're cooking up with the, uh, with the skin on it. Is you're going to have a hard time. So in other words, you want to cut it yeah, into three-inch pieces and then cut it in half and take off the skin. outer skin yeah, the in, the and one. then boil it. Yeah. Boil it, yeah. Okay, and then when you can poke the fork in it, it's cooked. Yeah. And then you can eat it and chop it up and put it in potato salad. Right? Yes, Rolando? sir. Okay, I hope you got that, Haluso Joe. Thank you very much for calling. And I think we have another caller. Uh, do we have another caller? Yes, you do. Okay, and uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Calling from Hilo. And okay, from Hilo? Yes. And uh, question? The picture is a little better, so can he go through the dessert that he made? Okay, uh, <laughs> Rolando, maybe you can explain how you make the custard again. I think the custard was the, the hard part. Uh, I wonder if you can explain how you make the caramelize the sugar and, and then uh, maybe you can explain it. I don't, I don't know if you can do okay. it or not. Okay, to caramel, first of all, be, be, before you make your custard mixture, you make a caramelized sugar. Uh, you caramelize uh, one cup of sugar to a one fourth cup of water. Right. Caramelize till it's um, dark brown but not burned. Because when you get to burn, it's it funny taste. And then you're gonna put it inside the uh, the molds, whatever, how big your molds you want to. But put the car caramelized sugar in the molds, yeah. and then you're gonna make your mixture. The mixture is a, a dozen of egg egg yolks. We got um, uh, 30 ounces uh, can of uh, condensed milk, and uh, 30 ounces of uh, uh, evaporated milk, and uh, vanilla. Right. How much vanilla? We got about a couple of tablespoons. Okay. Okay. And then, yes. once you have the oil mixture, it's either you bake it under water uh, or you go steam up for half an hour. Okay. So when you put it in the oven, you put the mold in the water. In the water, in the pan. And, and then, then for the water, what temperature and how long? 350 degrees centigrade. Okay. How far, uh, Fahrenheit. And then you go uh, bake them up at least 30 to 45 minutes. And then if you steam it? And uh, when, you, when you steam it, you will steam up uh, in the mold direct to the steamer for uh, 20 to half an hour. Okay. And to, to find out if it is cooked, you just have to have the toothpick or the, uh, maybe a steak knife. When you poke on the middle, when the, the toothpick or the, the, the knife come out clean and it's cooked. Okay. When it's still um, <coughs> sticking up with your toothpick or the, uh, the knife, the, the stuff is not cooked yet. Oh, okay. I got that. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, thank you for calling from Hilo. And uh, we are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library. And you're watching Agriculture 194V, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant. And uh, we have with us t uh, this evening Rolando Esteban and uh, daughter Glo Ivy and uh, Nell Venzon and we have another caller uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question please oops I think we just lost our caller uh, we have Patrick here with another question go ahead Patrick 
Yes, my question is for Rolando, and it's about the stock for his Ponset. Um, you say you have shrimp shell, bone, and shiitake in there. And how long do you boil it? And do you like bring it to like a very high boil or just like a simmering boil? It's going to be an medium heat, and you got to reduce him at least one fourth. Was the shiitake in there too? No, no more shiitake. It's just a bone. We got the chicken bone on it, uh, the shell, and if you got some, you know, some uh, chicken skin. Sometimes chicken skin because the flavor of the oil will come on it. So like about one gallon of water you got if in you there? Go for one gallon of water, depends on, uh, depends on how much you're going to cook. For, uh, for every package, as I said, we, we use only about three to four cups of water. So when you boil, we make plenty. So for one gallon of stock, when you boil it, make sure it's only a three-quarter gallon now. So you get to extract all the flavor from the shell and from the bone. Okay. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go Hello? ahead with the question, please? Hello? Yes. Oh, Great. hi. My hi. name is Peony. I'm calling from Oahu. Okay. And your question? My question is how to make the pressed lumpia wrapper. Okay. If he can give me the exact recipe for the breast lumpia wrapper. Okay, Rolando, you want to quickly go no, over the... the breast lumpia wrapper is different, is, uh, all different one. If you want with the egg flavor. When you yes. go for the egg flavor, one egg. One egg. One egg into... Um, is that uh, with uh, yellow and white? Yeah, yellow and white. Uh-huh. One egg. You got a tablespoon of... Uh, a, a teaspoon of flour. Teaspoon. Teaspoon of flour. Uh -huh. And about one third cup of water. That's one. How many? One third cup. One third cup yeah. of water. Okay. And then you get to uh, mix you, uh, the, the flour. You you gonna cook him up. One egg, teaspoon of flour. No, about, uh, one third yeah, one, cup of one water. Egg, uh, one third cup of uh, water uh -huh. and the one third cup of flour. I forget. Yeah, it's a one third cup. What of is flour. a teaspoon flour that you yeah. told me earlier? Is it a teaspoon or a one-third cup of flour? One, if we put one-third, because uh, we, we make it, because if you go for only one wrapper, it's one egg and uh, one, teaspoon, uh, one teaspoon and one teaspoon of water. That's for one, one, one wrapper, wrapper now we're talking about. But this about. one is how many wrapper? Excuse what was that again? Uh, the one egg and one-third cup of water and one-third cup of flour, how many wrapper I can produce on we this? We can make about three to four wrappers out of it. Three wrapper, okay. And then how, how, how do you cook that? Do you bake it? Do you... No, you, it's fresh. You, you make it press, you make them dry, actually. When you make a, just like a one paste, and then you, you, uh, you come up with a paste and uh -huh. stream up and you stream roller it. Uh-huh. That's how to do it. Oh, and you don't you put it, it on a, a pan or cook it, something? Something the wrapper? Like, I mean, you got to let it dry by itself. Also, you just mix all these ingredients? Uh -huh, mix all the ingredients, make paste out of it, and then you go roll, in, in roll roller pin, using roller pin. And you don't put it on a stove? No, uh, it, it will be dry up and you go all crack up. Oh, okay. And make sure it's uh, keep on moisture. Moisture. How do yeah, you moisture. do that? Yeah, usually we put a wet towel. Oh, wet towel. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Rolando. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Aloha from Oahu. Thank you. Okay, okay. well, thank you for calling from Oahu. Uh, Rolando, you had some ground pork that you rolled up. Did you... Uh, we get him over there. Uh, if you oh, maybe you can bring it back up, and then uh, we'll put it under the overhead camera, and uh, we can show the audience what it looks like uh, when okay. it's all prepared. Oh. Okay, so this is the finished product. The finished product, and we serve it the, uh, with banana ketchup. Okay, we, we, I'm, I'm pretty sure that many people didn't know what banana ketchup is. So, so once they you usually know about tomato, but we use in banana ketchup back home. It's kind of the sweet side. So this is, what, this is it right here. You got the roll there, then you slice it up into sections. And then the banana ketchup, if I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, there is the uh, banana sauce, Jufron. Uh, banana sauce, it's like a ketchup, but it's made out of bananas. Okay. 
We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hi, this is Chanel. Okay. I'm calling from Kailua Kona. Okay. Uh, my question is um, for the custard dessert. Can you use white sugar rather than condensed milk for the custard? It is. As I said, you can use that. Uh, some of condensed milk sometimes it, it, it curd, but because uh, sugar, if you don't, because the condensed milk is really uh, plenty of sugar on it, and I think it is the best way you, know, you, you, you can control the sugar out of it by using the uh, the regular sugar. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for. Did that answer the question from Kona? I guess it did. Uh, since we're waiting for more callers, uh, we're going to have Patrick here. He's got a whole bunch of questions for us. Uh, Patrick, go ahead with the next question. Yes, uh, that question is for Rolando. I just wanted to ask him about the guinea otan that uh, he mentioned earlier. And uh, if he serves it at his restaurant and um, if, uh, if they also have... Uh, coconut milk inside that thing? Yes. It is cooked. The guinatan is cooked with coconut milk, actually. That's the soupy one. And that's what makes the flavor. So then they usually put it on the last part. They mix uh, every, every, the fruits and the, uh, the tapioca and the sweet potato or whatever you put inside. You make them soft first and you are, put it last. Are you offering that at your restaurant? Um, as of now, we're not doing it because it's kind of takes quite a lot of ingredients for that. A lot that. of ingredients, a lot of work, but um, if, if people would like to make an order, big order, we, we want it to be in a big order because that mm -hmm. one is a lot of work. And I, I remember you saying that you had a problem with the puso, the banana puso. Um, do you also serve that dish, the vegetarian one of that, at your restaurant? The banana puso, the hearts of the banana. Uh, it's kind of hard to find nowadays to get this banana heart. You gotta take out the matchsticks uh, or something. Mm -hmm. The matchsticks instead is a too, you know. <coughs> but as I said, to make it more easier for everybody and same taste. Straight from the, the bottom. Ready -made. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. We Plus have. We don't want to butter. I mean, we we don't want to uh, damage all the banana because the banana heart usually that's what bear fruits. And people won't really give you the banana hearts out of that, or else they're going to have any banana at all. Okay, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yes, sir. I'm calling from Kalapana. Okay. What is the difference between pancit palabok and the spaghetti? Okay, the pancit palabok, the spaghetti, they're using the, uh, the uh, tomato sauce. Whereas the pancit palabok, we're using our own sauce. We, uh, we get the palabok sauce using all kinds of uh, ingredients with uh, uh, the, some uh, shrimp-based uh, sauce okay. instead of tomato sauce for the, uh, for the spaghetti. And the texture-wise, I think um, spaghetti, uh, they're using uh, uh, the wheat flour, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And for the uh, palabok, we're using the... Uh, Rice flour and cornstarch. Cornstarch, okay. What about the pancit uh, mami? What is the difference too? Okay, the pancit mami, we're using that with the soup. Pancit mami is just it's like just saimin. just like the saimin then, huh? Just like saimin, yeah. Oh, thank you. Do you we serve that in your restaurant too? Um, just different kind of noodles again. Miki. It's a fresh one. It's oh, really just soft. the miki. Just like uh, saimin. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Kalapana. <clears throat> and uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194V, Focus on Agriculture. <coughs> this evening, we're featuring Glow Ivy Filipino Store and Restaurant located in Kona. And uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello? Hello? Hello, Hello where are you calling from? Uh, hi, I'm calling from Kona. Okay, and your question? Okay, my question is to Rolando. Okay. About uh, the lumpia wrapper, if I, I want about maybe 100 wrapper, how many flowers and how many uh, um, eggs are going to use? Okay. Can you uh, give me all, all that um, um, ingredients? 
Okay, uh, it's, it's all bears again. Okay, uh, for a uh, hundred wrappers, usually we, we put up uh, two dozen eggs with a gallon of flour and uh, one quart of water. Okay, and how that, I gonna mix it on, all on one time? Uh, you can use it one time, but it's uh, No, I mean, I gonna, I gonna mix it one time, then how I gonna prepare it? Okay. Like to bake it? No, actually, this is uh, the fresh itself. When you bake, uh, when you make it, you make it just like one paste, okay? And then you make a portion up. I, I do believe for one wrapper, you got a uh, one tablespoon of uh, of the uh, the paste that you then you gotta roll him up with a roller pin mm -hmm. to make him flat. And as I said, we gotta keep it moisture. Okay, and. Is it have a salt or something like a seasoning no. for the wrapper or just like that? Just like that. <coughs> okay, thank you so much. Yeah, and then, um, if we got a big one like that, I think the best way you can do just you know we get so much um, in the store. But if you want the real um, no, because I want to find out how to make in my own. Oh, okay, okay, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, this is Divina Rolando. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh. I just want to make my own, yeah. Oh, because when you're explaining the, the, um, you know, the, I want to, uh, want to find out how. It okay, it's just just like uh, you're making a fresh Mickey, but uh -huh. this one you got a uh, rolling pin, real, real thin. Whereas you become a, a fresh Mickey, you you uh, roll him up about a one eighth of an inch. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Bye. Thank you for calling from Kona, and we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hi, Dr. Fuji. Welcome home. Well, thank you. Um, his um, uh, pork roll, maybe you should show it where the, how the egg and the Vienna sausage in the center so people know what it is. Okay. I was brought up with the, uh, we, I was brought up with the more corn style, so I just wanted to see how his came out. Did you get the question? Oh, could, could you repeat the question again? He should so show his uh, ground pork roll. Yes. So people can see the inside of the, um, what it looks like when it's sliced. Oh, well, may, uh, let's see. Maybe we can get, can we get the Camera. pork roll uh, and uh, put it over there and then can we see a cross section of it so we can get it on the overhead camera real quick? Yes, Doctor. We're running out of time, so uh, cut it and then uh, let's let get the overhead camera on it. So, just lay it flat on the table there, Rolando, and then the overhead camera can zoom in on it. There, okay. Yeah, that way people can see what it looks like. Yeah, we've got a few more minutes. We're going to have to close, so we can Thank cut you, it. Thank you, Dr. Fuji. Cut it. Okay. Now, Rolando, lay one out so we can see what it looks like in the middle. Okay, now can we zoom in on that oh, a little bit? Look at the one in the egg. Uh, lay, lay it flat. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't come in the middle like a sushi. Yeah, we'll get this one up. Yeah, we're going to, while Rolando's doing that, we're going to have to close. I'd like to thank uh, Rolando Esteban for joining us this evening with uh, Glow Ivy, the daughter, and Nell Venzon, president of Carico Hawaii. And uh, we hope that you join us uh, next Thursday evening when we have uh, KTA Superstore with us. And uh, that will be our final class. So uh, we hope you join us next Thursday evening. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you very much for watching Focus in Agriculture. And we hope you have a good evening. Thank you. Now come for peace. Uh, we have, uh, we have been...